Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another review today of another beautiful Backman tender engine. So I've actually had today's model for quite a few years, but it's so beautiful, I thought, you know what, I'm going to take a fresh look at this with my 2020 eyes, although they're not 2020, I'm a bit short-sighted, and see how it compares to Locos being produced today. So the Loco is this, it is the beautiful Backman Patriot class. Now Backman have been making these for quite some years, but they're still producing them today. In fact, they are taking pre-orders for the latest version, Unknown Warrior, which of course is the real life uh, rebuild replica of a Patriot class. If I can get an affiliate link, I will put it down in the description for you, but the RRP is incredibly high for the latest Backman Patriots, £189.95, which to me sounds insane for a model that's a few years old, and I sure hope it's seen some updates since mine was made. Obviously, you can get them a little bit cheaper from the retailers, but they're still over £160, so it's quite a lot of money. So come with me, we'll get this out and find out whether or not it is worth it. Let's give it a try. So I bought my particular version from Rails of Sheffield. It was second-hand, I believe, back in 2016, and the price is on the end of the box. So if I do show you that, you can see uh, £89.50, that's what I paid. Not bad, second-hand, of course, much, much better than the price they're going for new today. Mine is 31-212, it is a Patriot 5514, Duke of Sutherland, and it is in the LMS Crimson. You can also see that these take an 8-pin DCC decoder, although I do happen to know that the latest releases of this model have been modified to have a 21-pin decoder socket, I believe, which is now in the tender. Okay, so as you can see through the front of the box, mine is in the beautiful LMS Crimson, which really is gorgeous. I'm a huge fan of this livery, and I can't remember having any loco in LMS Crimson that I've not absolutely loved. So really looking forward to getting this out again and seeing what it's like. Let me show you the back of the box then, because we do have a brief history of the Patriot class, so feel free to pause and read that if you'd like to. Although, as always, I will give you some more info in just a second. For now, though, let's get this out and see how this holds up, shall we? The Patriot. Now, the Loco and Tender are not connected uh, on my version. I believe they are on the later version. I'll talk about that later on. But on my version, they're not. Uh, however, I have connected them, which is why the Tender sits slightly uncomfortably there in the packaging. But I did check. It is secure. It's not being damaged by being put in like that. So I think it's OK. Right, so we have some paperwork inside here, which is good. So let's take a look at some of these. OK, so first things first, we do have an exploded diagram of the Loco here. And this does give away, actually, how poor some aspects of the mechanism are. You can see that we have square bearings on the chassis there, which the axles for the wheel set actually sit straight into. We've got no proper metal bearings on this, which is obviously nowhere near acceptable for £189. I would really hope they've upgraded that on the latest version. If you have a later version, uh, please let me know if the mechanism is any better on yours than it is on mine. But there you have it, the exploded diagram with the list of parts, of course, which is quite handy. And then on the back, you have more of the sort of run-of-the-mill maintenance instructions, running in, curves, uh, body removal, DCC decoder fitting, although do discard that if you're buying a newer version because the decoder is in the tender now, as I say. And then I think the other sheet is just, uh, that one's about the collector's club, and I assume this is about the guarantee. Uh, which is guaranteed for 12 months. Well, I bought mine several years ago, so I don't think that's relevant anymore. I don't imagine Backman would honour that if I tried to return it now. Anyway, let's take off the sleeve then and have a look at some of the various details. Okay, so first of all, we have what appears to be the guard that fits on top of the tender to keep the coal from spilling out, so that's pretty good. And we've also got a few other fittings in there, including a vacuum pipe, which is pretty good. And then we have yet another detail bag here. If I just untape this one, you can see what's inside there. So we have some steps. It seems to be largely steps. We have some cab doors, what appear to be cab doors. A spare loco to tender draw bar. Perhaps that one is closer for closer coupling, I would guess, maybe. We also seem to have cylinder drain cocks and also some more vacuum fittings as well. Uh, so I will leave those in the box for safekeeping. And for now then, let's remove the loco from the pack and see what it's like. Okay. Okay, so the first thing you will notice is that we don't have any connection between the loco and tender. As I've already said, the decoder socket is in the loco with this version. 
And also, disturbingly, we don't have any tender pickups, which again, for a very expensive loco, isn't that acceptable by modern standards. Once again, if you have a later Bankman Patriot, please do let me know in the comments or by email or however you can. Do the later versions have tender pickups? Surely they must do for that massive RRP. But besides the slight grievances with the mechanism, you can see what a beautiful, beautiful model this is. I think the only word I can think of really is beautiful. It's absolutely superb. It's very, very heavy, and the reason for that is that we do have a die-cast metal running board, which of course is a great justification, or at least in part, for that massive RRP, which is good. But yeah, as you can tell, there's a great deal of finesse to this model, despite its age, really, which I think is really impressive. So I'll give you a close look at this in just a second, but first of all, here is a little bit of history on the LMS Patriots. So 52 Patriot-class locomotives were built for the LMS to the design of Henry Fowler between 1930 and 1934. Intended for express passenger work, the design closely mirrored that of the successful Royal Scott class, but they weighed in at around four tons less, uh, the smaller size of course earning them the nickname Baby Scots. The design featured a powerful three-cylinder layout with Walshirt's valve gear and the same boilers used on the large Clortons, which was a large class of 460s from the LNWR. During the late 1940s, 18 Patriots were rebuilt to incorporate new attenders, cabs and boilers designed by William Stanier, although less than 20 years later the withdrawal of the class would begin in 1960 and end in 1962 after every single member of the class had been scrapped with no survivors, quite sadly. Although, as I've already mentioned, we do have Unknown Warrior, uh, which is being produced as we speak, hopefully. Okay, so there she is then, the Patriot Duke of Sutherland, up close and personal for you. And I am absolutely thrilled with this. I've always loved it. It is such a beautiful model. Easily one of the nicest looking engines I've owned, I reckon. And it's easy to see at least where the detail is concerned, why this would be quite an expensive model. So, so far it's looking pretty good where value for money is concerned, but obviously there is room for improvement. It is pretty hefty though, as I've already mentioned, this weighs in at 346 grams, which is quite considerable. It's a little bit less than the Hornby Standard Class 4, but I would say for a loco this size, that is at the very least reasonable, and this should be able to haul quite a lot. We'll test the pulling power later on, of course. And as I say, there are real quality features on this model, such as that heavy metal die-cast running board, which is really, really good. As I said earlier, that's exactly what you'd expect on a model that costs 160 plus pounds. Really, really good, that. So let's take a look at the decoration then, and it is pretty complex with this one. You can see the running plate there has the yellow lining, so does the cylinders. The lining around the boiler is absolutely superb, can't really fault it. The side of the cab is incredibly nicely decorated too, as you can see it's fully lined. The numbering there looks really, really good. The cab windows, which are glazed, have the gold lining around them, which is great. We've got these two big holes on the side of the window, that's where one of the glazing pieces from the detail bag would fit. Without that it does look a bit silly, but that's fine because they included the parts. And as you can see, these splashes here are lined and we do have the Duke of Sutherland nameplate over that. Unfortunately, I don't believe those are etched, which is a bit of a shame on an expensive model. But who knows, on the latest release, perhaps those are etched. It's not for me to say, unfortunately. The level of detail is incredibly good. There are a lot of separately fitted parts. As you can see, we have a lot of the pipe work on the side of the boiler here, not moulded on, it is all separately fitted, which is really good to see. We have the separately fitted whistles there and the separately fitted safety valves. The safety valves are even made of metal, as you can tell, and they have a beautiful metallic shine to them as a result, which is really good to see. The smoke deflectors, not only are they separately fitted, but they're also made of metal, which is fantastic. So you ain't gonna be breaking those off anytime soon, which is really good. And if we take a look at the smoke box door, you can see we have a separately fitted handrail as well as a separately fitted lamp bracket, as well as the applied details there, such as the running number and shed code, which is really, really good. And a little below there, you see we have the absolutely tiny builder's plate. I think that's a builder's plate. It's so small, I can't read it, but hopefully the camera will be able to get it good for you. And we also have separately fitted lamp irons on the running plate. As well as being made of metal, it is also relatively well detailed with quite a lot of riveting on it. The front buffer beam is nicely detailed as well with more lining. We have metal buffers, which are nice and subtle, not too shiny, um, but they are sprung as well, as you can see, which is great. And we also have the NEM coupling pre-fitted to the front of the Loco as well, although being NEM, it is removable if you wanted to do that. 
The wheel set is beautiful. You can see we do have properly covered axles on these. It's not one of those horribly unrealistic locos <clears throat> with the visible axles poking out. It's much better than that. And the coupling rods, connecting rods and valve gear are really nice and fine as well. And no doubt they look excellent. In fact, I know they do because I've seen them running. Really, really nice those. The loco is covered in small details such as the reversing rod there and other small parts and components on the running plate which is really good to see. The cab is generally quite nicely detailed. We have the opening air intake on the top which is a fantastic feature which you would expect from a premium model with a premium price which is great to see. We have the metal handrails around the cab as well as a metal separately fitted tender full plate which does move and I suppose if you close couple the loco and tender the full plate might even reach the tender which would be nice wouldn't it? Inside the cab, the detail isn't very good, unfortunately. I have reason to believe that later releases of the Backman Patriot have better cabs than that. Let me know, have you seen a better cab than this on a later Patriot in the poll? I'd be interested to know, although at least some of the components have been picked out, the regulator, for example, and some of the other gauges. So it's not all bad news where that's concerned. The tender is very nicely detailed as well. I just love the underside of the Fowler tenders. Absolutely beautiful. It's something about the curves that just looks amazing. And the fact that it's all lined really helps as well. And I love the way these sort of springs and axle boxes stand out because they're black and not painted red. Really, really love the underframe of the tender. The tender has a nice decoration as well. As you can see, the LMS lettering is really good, as is the lining. The coal load is pretty clever. As you can see, we do have coal inside there, but it's at a quite low level, which means if you're happy with the factory fitted coal, you can keep that. If you'd rather add your own, you can just add some on top of that and you don't even need to remove it, which is really, really good. The tender is fitted with quite a few nice details, such as the controls, as you can see there, we've got tiny little buffers between the loco and tender, which is great. And around the back, quite a few decorated details as well, including the tender capacity signage. We also have more separately fitted lamp irons, more sprung buffers, and of course, a similar NEM coupling around the back. So where the detail is concerned, this is a very, very impressive model. Uh, I would easily believe that this was made this year, and I would still give it a really good mark on the detail. I suppose with the exception of the cab, possibly, the cab's not really that great. Although if they've improved that, then this model is easily meeting modern standards, in my opinion. So with that, let's talk about the mechanism. Ugh, that's a big letdown with this, unfortunately. We'll get it onto the track and get it tested. Okay, so there she is then, the Backman Patriot, looking absolutely beautiful. And while this is indeed very, very beautiful on the outside, on the inside, it's far more sinister. So the mechanism isn't very good. I've already mentioned the fact that my model has no tender pickups. Possibly the latest release at that very high price tag does have tender pickups. I don't know for sure. Please, as I say, do let me know in the comments if it does. But it goes far beyond that. The model is fitted with a three-pole motor, which is, in my opinion, unacceptable for a model that costs as much as this does. But far worse than that, if you remove the base, as you can see here, the wheel set does not have any proper turned metal bearings. They just sit straight into the chassis, into which square slots have been cut for the wheels to sit into. How cheap and nasty is that? So not only have we got massively increased wear and tear as a result of those square bearings, We've also got a lot of friction caused by those as well. And in my opinion, it is that increase in friction which has caused the motor in mine to overheat and actually damage itself. In fact, the motor in mine got so hot that it melted one of the plastic spaces inside the motor, which actually stopped the motor from turning. So a couple of times now, I've actually had to open up this motor to clean out the inside, replace that sort of melted plastic spacer and get the thing running again. The motor is still not right, unfortunately, with this. It still runs okay, and if I service it regularly, it's fine, but the motor ain't right. I got in touch with Backman once a few years ago to see if I could source some new motors. They said, sure, no problem, but it's gonna be 17 pounds. For a three pole motor, that seems far too expensive. Check out this video up here where I bought five pole motors, better motors than these, for just two pounds each. They wanted 10 times that for one of their motors. And I found that to be really quite uncompassionate on Backman's part. You know, instead of being sorry that one of their customers had spent all that money on a very expensive model and had it fail on them and offering them a replacement motor for a nominal fee of, you know, a few pounds, instead, they're charging you 17 pounds for a three pole motor. So needless to say, I haven't done it. And uh, unfortunately, because of that, I am showing you a loco that isn't in perfect condition because the motor has uh, got a problem. Either way, the performance isn't too bad. The slow speed used to be pretty good. We'll see how it's doing today. We'll give it a bit of a, a crawl and see how it goes. And I'll also try it over the express points to see if it's uh, 
going to cut out because of the lack of tender pickups. As you can see though, the slow speed is fairly good to say it's a three pole motor. It's not the best in the world. We have seen better slow speed from other models. It is a little bit jerky actually, but it's certainly not too bad. Let's go over the express point. The dead zone, by the way, is right there on the edge of the shot. So we'll see how it goes. The front wheel is on it now and over it. Second set of wheels are on it now and the third set are just going on. So as you can see, yeah, it is not cutting out on the express points, which is good. It means that the pickups that the Loco does have, although they are few, they do seem to be making good contact. In my opinion, though, you can't beat tender pickups. Uh, tender pickups are uh, a much more reliable way of doing things. In addition to Loco pickups, of course, uh, they stay cleaner for longer and they perform much better, in my opinion, uh, particularly on DCC. But as you can see, it is a nice, smooth runner. Uh, very nice, reasonably quiet as well, which is a miracle, given the uh, lack of proper bearings or anything like that. It just comes across, to me at least, as being a little bit sneaky to produce such a good-looking model externally like this. People are going to want to buy it, and of course they do for a lot of money, and then inside is hidden such a toy-like, poor-quality mechanism just really bad isn't it I mean they've proved externally they can do a good job why can't they on the inside well because people don't see that when they're buying it in my opinion which is naughty anyway I've set up some coaches for this loco not too many because I don't want to stress her out given the faulty motor that I now have inside this one as a result of the overheating so let's go and couple to it and see if we can't get the train to run and I'm absolutely gutted about the poor quality mechanism. It's a crying shame because this is one of Backman's most beautiful models. It's super good quality for the most part. All that metal, all that detail, beautiful decoration. But it's just let down by the hidden demon inside. A poor quality mechanism. What a shame. Luckily, I must say that Backman's more recent models uh, of different prototypes have been much better quality where the mechanism is concerned. So they are getting better. And uh, like I say, I do hope that modern releases of the Patriot are much better than mine. Okay, so I've got some other Patriots to show you. On the middle line, I have the Hornby Railroad Patriot, which is obviously a much more basic model, uh, but it's much cheaper as well. It's available for roughly half the price of the uh, Backman one. And guess what, folks? The mechanism, far better. Five-pole motor, full tender pickups, proper metal bearings on the wheel set. This is a far better model mechanically than Backman's. Why can't they get it right? I never understand it. Okay, so there we go. And then on the inside line, I have yet another different Patriot. This is the very old mainline one, as you can see. Still reasonably well detailed, decent runner. Uh, it's probably the worst of the three, though, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, mechanically, they're not brilliant. But as you can see, running quite nicely. Okay, let's catch up with the Backman then and see how it's getting on. And don't forget to see which other 460s you can spot, folks, on the line. There is an odd one out. But for now, as you can see, yep, the Patriot is a decent runner. It's nice and smooth, reasonably quiet, not terribly powerful. We'll talk about the pulling power in a second. And as you can see, because of its slightly dodgy motor, uh, even with four coaches, it's being knocked for six just by Gordon's Hill there. I don't know what to do about that. You can't just buy a cheap motor from China because Backman use their own. <laughs> so you've got to buy from them if you want a replacement motor, and they're pretty expensive. But yeah, overall it's a nice model, and with a Hornby mechanism inside it, it would be an excellent model. There you go, that's Sir Robert T Turnbull. I think it is Turnbull, I think so. Quite an old one. <laughs> Perfectly covered up there by the other engines.
So let's take a look at some of my ratings then for the beautiful Backman Patriot. Yes, I think the exterior detail was probably the best and strongest aspect of the model. I've given this a 4.5. We have an awful lot of detail with this one. The decoration is really, really good. The only thing I would criticize, the only thing that really stops this getting a full five star, I would say is the quality of the cab detailing. And on later versions, I believe they have improved the cab detailing. So I'd love to see one of those and maybe give it a five star. The performance similarly when they're working properly, that is, is very, very good the slow speed is acceptable at the very least if not above average and they're also reasonably nice and smooth when they're running as well the pulling power isn't that fantastic to be honest with you i could only measure mine hauling around 19 coaches on straight and level track which is the same as some of backman's 060 tender engines the j11 and the 3f which are obviously much smaller it's not that great the mechanism though is where this really really falls down we've got a three-pole motor no tender pickups no bearings on the wheel set and square slots into which the wheel set sits. It really is a poor, poor quality mechanism for what is a beautiful locomotive. It's such a shame about that because if I was able to give the mechanism five star, this loco would be coming out looking really, really good. Now with quality, I've tried to be as fair as possible here because the build quality is really, really good. There's a lot of die cast on the bodywork and it's a reasonably nice heavy model. I've knocked it a star off for the mechanism, which I've already penalized heavily on the mechanism category but generally yet yeah, the quality is okay so where the value for money is concerned i've given it the benefit of the doubt i would seriously hope that some of my major grievances with this model namely the mechanism i suppose have been improved upon for later releases of the model please do let me know in the comment if you know this to be true or otherwise However, because it is such a detailed model with quite a lot of metal work on board, I have given this a three star middle of the road for the price that you can pick these up, about 160 pounds. Must be said though, other manufacturers are offering better models for lower prices, it must be said. Overall then, that is not a bad score considering, 6.91 out of 10. Into the logbook it goes then, there we go, 15th just above the Hornby Dean single and below the 76. Obviously this is a superior model to the Dean single, but the Dean single was very, very cheap and it did have a better mechanism. Got to say, the cheap Hornby Railroad version, much, much better runner, much better. I don't know which is more powerful at this point, I would expect it would be the Backman because obviously it's heavier. But as far as actual running qualities are concerned, you can't beat Hornby. It's quite a poor show really, isn't it, that with just four coaches. So the big question is, folks, does the mechanism ruin the model for you? Is it a deal breaker or would you still buy it? Let me know. So it's a good model folks, overall it's a good model, could have been a superb, incredible model, but of course that isn't so because of the mechanism. Either way, let me know down in the comments what you thought, was I too harsh on this, was I not harsh enough, I'd always love to hear what you think. For the time being though, thank you very much for watching, thanks for your company, and I will see you very soon with some more videos. Alright folks, take care, have a good week, see you next time.